Hi, I'm Tara from livingonadime.com, and you are? I'm Mike. And I'm Jill. And this is my mom, in case anyone's new. She lives in Kansas, and we're in Colorado. Um, and we're doing a series on Penny Pension Mama, 500 Ways I Save $500 a Month is the book, but we're doing a series on Penny Pension Mama, just how a mom has saved money over the years and different things that she had to do when she didn't have money because 45 years ago, they didn't have credit cards. You didn't just go put it on the credit card. And you didn't get loans like you do now either. You didn't just go out and get a car loan. And not, well, not like you do now. Yeah, if you needed something, you had to think and figure out how yeah. do I fix it, make it, or make do with something. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is part three, I think. And um, so we're just going to head on in. She's going to start off with the child abuse that I lived through <laughs> as a child having open electrical boxes. Oh, yeah, that's No right. electronics. No electron. I had no electronics. You had to I walk to none. school in a bad neighborhood without your own phone. Uphill both ways in a blizzard. Yeah, I'm sure. well, actually, you did go in the snow. That first year when Dad left, it was snowed every day. It was like minus 15, and you had to walk to school by yourself. I was scared to death yeah, for Yeah, we were looking the other day on the Weather Channel. That was the worst winter Kansas has ever had, apparently. Yeah. And it's we'll, have, we'll have to see if we can find pictures of the Volkswagen buried, because there was pictures yeah. of me. We'll have to show that when we talk about that, but yeah. 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 And I was terrified to have you going by yourself because I couldn't take you. But Yeah, Mom was talking about our house and some of the things. They bought an old 1920s house. 1917. 1917 that they had decided to remodel that this old doctor guy owned that was blind and literally never cleaned it ever. I mean, you see these, these shows and they're like, let's burn down this house. That was the kind of house my parents bought. I don't know what my father was thinking. <laughs> I don't know what you were thinking, letting them do it. Letting <laughs> them do it. But that's all you could afford back then, see? Yes. So you just bought what you could afford. And then as a newlywed, you would fix that house up and sell it and move on to the next level. Yes, and because your love would keep you warm. Oh, listen to you. Your love <laughs> of, a, of a pot belly stove is what kept us warm. Yes. So, well, I was just going to, I showed this in the, the last episode, but I was going to tell everybody, in this picture here, I don't know if you can see Dad back in the back. Um, yeah, he's behind see. my head there. Yeah, he's, I think he's right back there. Uh, we've been in the house about three months or so at this point, and David was just a couple weeks old and all, and I had no wash machine, no dryer, no wash machine. So what I had to do was once a week, and I'm not sure why, I don't know if I didn't have the car or what, but I'd have to, and this was what I got, you know moms need a break every once in a while from the kids. Well probably dad had the car at work, didn't he? Well, he, no, he was watching, the, watching you guys, I think, when I did this sometimes. Oh. So I don't know why we didn't, I didn't use the car, but I had, I did the laundry for four of us. I had two in diapers cloth diapers and so and we didn't have wipes back then so you just used a wash rag and I had to double layer you guys in clothes because it was so cold we had the sheetrock dust and we were talking on the last episodes about how dirty you could get I mean I went through clothes like it was you just I well imagine sitting a toddler down in a pile of dirt how long would you last staying clean? And this is the way, you know, how dirty. So I had a lot of laundry. But I would take and take it in once a week, and I'd load it up on my little red wagon, and I'd pile it really high, and then I would walk it back. I'd have to go back behind the house, through the alley, through another section, and then across the street over to the laundromat, I would haul this wagon of laundry. Because we didn't have a washer or dryer. We didn't yeah. even have... Well, that sink was just put in in the picture that you had, so you yeah, just got we just got yeah. sink in, and so I would haul. This was January in Kansas, yeah. so it wasn't you know refreshing walk or anything. It was freezing, but I, when I got to the laundromat and did the laundry, I didn't have money to pay to have the clothes dried too. I had to. I could. I barely could afford to have 
paved had them washed and I'd bring them back home. We didn't have a clothesline at that time. I didn't have any racks. I couldn't afford racks to hang them on. We didn't have a shower with a shower rod to hang them on. You know, yep. and part of this series is teaching people to when you don't have anything and you don't have the money to go buy something to make do with what you have and try to figure out how to do this stuff. So I'd haul all this wet heavy laundry back home and actually I was very proud of myself. I thought this was rather ingenious. What I did was we had these monster radiators and at this time we didn't have the wood burning stove. We just had these radiators from the old heater and the heat ran constantly and the temperature would get up having it full blast it would get up to like 55 58 that's all the warmer we could get it into the house because the walls were so thin and had no insulation or anything my curtains not from the round the seal of the window but from the wall would blow out when the wind would blow I could see my curtains just fluttering back and forth from it coming through the wall so much so it was really cold in this house and we kept this heater going all the time these heaters going so I bring this laundry home and what I figured out was I would sort out the lightest weight clothes like the kids' diapers. I didn't use pre-folded diapers. I just folded them myself because pre-folded were more expensive. So they were really thin, the diapers were. And so what I would do, I'd start out with diapers and the lighter baby clothes. And I'd start on one radiator. And these radiators, we're talking six-foot-long radiators in a couple of the rooms. Yeah, were, we'll see if we can get a picture to put them in. Because it's hard for people who haven't had hot water steam radiators to understand what they are. This, yeah, these were huge radiators. Some were tall, some were really long. So I'd start laying the, the thinnest clothes out. And I'd walk from room to room and laying clothes out on each radiator. And let me just say, people who don't know, these radiators don't really get, they get hot, Well, but ours you were, can sit on them and... Ours was close. hot water. The steam ones get hotter and you can burn yeah. yourself, but ours were hot water so you couldn't get burnt on them. Yeah, so we sat, I remember sitting on them to get warm. Because <laughs> it was so cold, I would just sit on the radiator to warm up. And so that's why you were able to put your clothes on there. Oh, yeah. Because they didn't get hot so to speak. I mean, yeah, they, they wouldn't did, burn, them, right? burn them or yeah. anything. And so I'd start in one room, walk around, go through the living room, each bedroom, and I would put my clothes. Well, by the time I got all the way through the whole house on every radiator, I'd be back to the first radiator and those silly diapers were dry because it was putting out so much heat and they were so thin. So I would gather all those out. I'd walk through the house again, gathering up all the dry stuff and then I started over and put the next thinner layer around and I did this usually about three times and what I'd end up with was the heavy jeans and that kind of stuff because then those could stay on there for a while you know and dry out really good and I'd have the other stuff folded and able to put out because I didn't want them sitting in the basket getting the soft lightweight stuff getting all wrinkled and crunched you know how stuff does wet clothes would do if you let them sit so that I thought that was rather ingenious for me to figure out to do the light stuff first around and then do the heavy stuff so yes. you know when we do this stuff it's like trying to show people like I've said a million times to try to figure out what you can do in your situation we have Pinterest we have the internet and we just kind of veg in front of these and somebody will say, okay, you just need to do this, and we just like a zombie, go do it. Yeah, but, people don't take the initiative to try and figure it out themselves. They want someone else to tell them what to do. And I like YouTube. I go on there and learn yeah. a lot of stuff. I'm not saying that necessarily, but start thinking. Instead of just going and saying, well, I need to go buy me a, a wash machine and a dryer, think of what you can do, you know. So then, um, fast forward just a few years after we were, the house still wasn't remodeled. We were still in the middle of, you know, starting to do that. My husband um, worked at Player Piano Company here in Wichita. He was vice president. And he came home weeks Friday. Hold on, tell everybody what a player piano is, because some people don't know what a player piano is. A player piano is, let's see if I got a picture of one here real quick. It's where, it's kind of where you have, you have a paper roll. Yeah, it's and all the piano. instruments are in there, and they all... Yeah. Just a straight player has nothing but the paper roll and it automatically plays by itself without a person playing. Every, yeah. Most everybody's seen one. Yeah. And so um, 
that's where he worked was at Player Piano. And Friday we had, one Friday we paid all of our bills. We lived paycheck to paycheck. I mean, we weren't making, we were putting money into trying to get the house fixed up. So How we didn't. How much did you guys live on back then? Do you remember? I think, I think we were bringing in like three fifty, four hundred dollars a month. A month? A month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but our house payment was a hundred and ten dollars. But we were having to buy lumber and all this stuff, you know, for doing the house, just to try to get the kitchen together and stuff. And we had to buy appliances. And um, so we didn't have much, but he came home in October that, well, that Friday we paid all the bills, gone grocery shopping. <laughs> that was when their warehouse shopping back then was you had these big, huge carts, and, and Dad would get a tissue box, an empty tissue box so that the toilet paper came in and he'd stick the two of you in there so he could corral you better like a playpen. <laughs> I remember riding around on those. Yeah. And so he would, he would push the one cart with you in there and then I'd push the other to yeah. put the food and stuff on. But anyway, so we done our grocery shopping. We had nothing left for money. We yeah. used it all up. So that was on Friday. Monday he came I'm just, now that I think about it Mondays were not a good day for us <laughs> when it comes to his work he came home on Monday and he said I've lost my job he was vice president of player piano company now yeah. this was a secure position he was vice president and he said they would closed down our whole position or whole section whole thing and he had no work and when I, so when people say, well, I don't have a job, how am I, I understand all these things. Well, we, and one thing you haven't said, we had absolutely no family. We were no. by ourselves in Colorado. We had no family, nothing at yes. all. And yes. our family did not help at all financially. Nowadays, oh. I see families who, they will get ten, fifteen. Twenty thousand dollars a year in subsidies from grandma and grandpa for vacations and cars and all this stuff. Well, we had none of that, and you, occasionally you didn't even ask your parents for that. No. Once you got married, you wouldn't dream of asking your yeah. parents. I mean, it was just almost. And here, and I'm just going to tell you in a minute. We asked our parents for money, but yeah, but you did. You know, you just them. didn't do that. And I do. I mean, like occasionally, uh, my dad's parents were ranchers. And occasionally we'd get like a quarter of a cow or something. They gave we us put that in the freezer. Christmas, but that was our Christmas present. But that was the Christmas present was a quarter of a cow. And, you know, we got sick of steak after a while, which is hard to believe now that I'm saying that. But, um, yeah, you just didn't ask. No, you yeah. didn't. And so when I say we had nothing then, we had no savings. No credit cards. No credit. You didn't have credit yeah. cards to use for. You oh. couldn't go buy groceries on credit. So we just had what we nothing. Nothing to and, sell on eBay. You didn't no. have garage sales. No, yeah. we didn't have many thrift stores or garage no. sales and stuff back then. You know, you just you just didn't have that stuff. And so that was October, and the only thing we had to live on for we went from October to January was he did piano lessons. Dad did piano lessons and we got I think forty dollars, fifty dollars a month from those piano lessons. So we would pay our basic utilities and get some groceries and we couldn't quite make the house payment. But one thing we had a problem with, we say we didn't have credit card, we only had one you only had one type of credit card back then. Sometimes you could go to a furniture company and get charged furniture, but you had a gas credit card. And so we had that credit card charged. And do you know, we were able to pay almost everything. It was real iffy on the house payment, but that one credit card, we struggled. If we hadn't had that, and that was the first time in my life I realized we almost sank because of that credit card debt and it wasn't very much it wasn't nothing compared to what people have now and when we came out of that I made up my mind no more no more charging on a credit card it just wasn't because I found out we could have survived if we didn't have that credit card debt 
you know, and that type of thing. So that was October. Finally in January, my husband was, uh, dad was really discouraged. I mean, he couldn't find a job and we did, he didn't know what to do. So we went and we borrowed, I talked him in, I didn't talk him into, he wanted to do it, but uh, he decided to go ahead and start our own business of building player pianos and Nickelodeons. And I was going to show you real quick so people have an idea why I'm talking. These are just a handful of pictures of, from our customers. And they, we would send these products. We built all the guts for these and things. In the last video, Mom was talking about drum rims. And in the middle, yeah. you can see the drum. It's a wooden piece on the outside that you uh -huh. then stretch the stuff over the rim. That's the drum rims she was talking about and in the see, last video. We actually built the drums then from scratch. Yeah. We didn't buy the drums and send them to customers. We built those drums from scratch. Yeah. And all the instruments we built from the screws. Yeah. And that thing in the middle with the white where the roll is on, that's called a spool frame. Yeah. We built a lot of those. That and was then underneath where mom's hand is, you can't see, but those are what we call the guts. Well, that's all the parts that push the air into the instruments that make the instruments go. It's called they, valve blocks and pneumatics. All those are inside work on a pneumatic system. Yeah, yeah they have hoses see. and tubes and stuff that all this whole inside here is full of all kinds of stuff you can't yeah. see. And I don't know if any of the this here's like a this here's a band organ with yep. a lot of stuff. Here's another type, you know, with the cymbals, the drums on the outside, xylophone. And we had our parts just to be impressive. We had our parts in Disneyland in um, oh yeah all Tokyo and was where was it the one in Florida or California that had our Florida Florida yeah. we had Florida and California there's a place called um, House on the Rocks I think up in Miss Wisconsin yeah. some place like that in uh, Eureka Springs Arkansas places like that the museums that have all these our instruments were there. At one point, McDonald's contacted us and wanted to do a contract because they wanted to do, put a Nickelodeon in a lot of their McDonald's and wanted us to build the guts for all their Nickelodeons for that type of thing. And we, we sent things to Jer We were the only people in the whole world that built these. Yeah. And Dad had the spool frame that Tara is talking about. I had a picture of I don't know where it's at now. For people that but, don't uh, know. The Nickelodeon is the piano, but it also has drums and wind instruments and different things that all play yeah. themselves together all at the same time. Yeah. yeah, see here's one that shows the xylophone, you know, with the drums and stuff. This here uh, has more pipes and things. Here's one that has the full, full shebang. Yeah, that's a Nickelodeon yeah. piano where it all played by itself. and. You can see and it in movies. It had accordion. And we did all that in our house, in our basement, and in our upstairs. We uh, took the wood. We took raw wood, and a lot of these things we would take raw wood and even plane down the raw wood and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, to build all this stuff. And um, so, like I said, we were the only ones in the whole world that built these. So we shipped to Germany and England and Japan and all over the world. Um, and we did really good. And but this here, well this here shows the it was only a little section of the upstairs where we had all of our parts and there was I think it was like thirteen hundred square feet upstairs maybe that we had filled with our workshop. And then we had the basement where we had big huge machinery, just stuff. Here's a couple we had lots of these instruments in our house. So had, we had, at one point, we had nine pianos and a seven, five organ. It was seven. Seven? Yeah, seven. seven. Was it seven pianos and two organs, or seven pianos and organs? Seven pianos and organ. And yeah. organ. This here was the organ. On this side, we had uh, a grand player, a player grand piano that was just one size smaller than concert grand. Yeah. Well, and keep that up for just a minute just to give you some perspective on our house where my brother and I are right now and aren't I just a cute little thing yes um, the door where the last picture where mom was showing how she put the tablecloth on the table and everything that table was sitting right where my brother and I are right now so her refrigerator when she yeah that one right there so the refrigerator was actually to the left 
there in that was our dining room and she mm-hmm. didn't have you can see the sink straight back behind me but she didn't have that kitchen sink or anything back installed so that's why everything was in the dining room because when they bought the house that kitchen was completely empty yeah it was totally empty yeah. yeah and a lot of people don't know but Tara sings like an angel she sings beautifully and she was practicing there <laughs> <laughs> So we had pianos everywhere, everywhere in the house. And, well, here's another. This will be, um, we got our first order. And this was, we started the business in January. And this is like August. This was our first really, really big order. Where did you get your money to start the business? Oh, I forgot, yeah. Well, we took, in January, we asked... Grandma and Grandpa, if we could borrow $2,000. So we borrowed $2,000, and you got to realize that had to pay for, uh, I think it was the month before rent, because we did, wasn't able to pay that, and three, we had to live off that $2,000 for, for our income for three months, and, and then we had to, or for a couple of months, we had to live off that income, and then um, we also had to buy equipment like, lays and drill presses and and band saws and all this kind of stuff we also had to take that two thousand and buy parts to build the things with you know we were starting from scratch we had nothing and we had to buy all this stuff and live off of the two thousand dollars so we got a few little orders let's see that picture again huh are you going to show us that same picture again well yeah so We've gotten a couple of small orders, but this was our first really, really big order. Well, look and at I you, want, you young thing, you. I know. Can't you believe it? But I've been working out in 100-degree temperatures with the humidity for days. But what I wanted to show you on this, a couple of things. When we started this business, except for the $2,000, and we paid every penny of it back to Grandma and Grandpa right away, we didn't go and try to find a building, you know, rent a building. We didn't take out a huge business loan to, um, uh, you know, to start the business up, to get deep in debt to do that. We didn't have any, we, we didn't have any overhead. Not, we already had, we're making the house payment. And if you go to start a business, that, this is a little sidetrack here, but if you go to start your own business, we... We looked at property later. We didn't end up doing it, but we looked at property where the house was on the property, not a big property, just, you know, a place where it had a huge building or a large garage with the house. That way, if your business collapses, you've got the house. You're just paying your regular house mortgage. If you buy, pay for a place to put your business and then you have a house on top of that and the business collapses, You've got to pay for that business that's no longer there, you know, and pay for that. Where if you can consolidate the two, you've got to think when you start your business, don't just automatically get a huge business loan, but think these little things through. How can we save? What can we do? If we collapse, you know, you can handle the mortgage probably. But if you don't, you've got the, you know, you see what I'm trying to say on how to do that? But anyway, so we didn't, we got our first order, and I say some people, the one of the main things people fail in business they're not prepared for success we got huge order monstrous we had no place to assemble we had so many so much stuff to assemble we had no place enough room to assemble the stuff so we took what we had we had a lot of uh, saw horses and plywood from remodeling the house and we set these long tables out in the backyard, and I mean, it was hot. And we sat outside, and we assembled these silly spool frames for this customer outside in the yard. And we did what we had to do, you know, at the time. Because yeah, this is in Kansas, and I mean, Kansas is miserable. There's a reason why we left Kansas, because <laughs> it is miserable in the summer. Awful. It was awful. And, you have and two most, weeks of spring, and you have two weeks of fall, and the rest of the year, the weather is miserable. And I lived there for 20-plus years. I can say that about Kansas. I know the truth. <laughs> it's cheap land for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but so we got them all built. Okay, so here's what happened that was interesting. 
we went and the guy had given us a down payment because we didn't have quite enough money still to build this big of an order. But he gave us a little bit of a deposit and he gave us the postage for these things. So we took that money and we got all the parts we needed, but we had to use the postage money because we ran out for some of the parts. So we got these things all built and now we had no way to send them to them. And we didn't know what to do because we didn't have any, I mean, we didn't have a dime left to send even one, let alone, I think there was like 12, 15 of these big old spool frames. We didn't know what to do. So we got to calculating and we had this, I don't know if you can see in the background, this Volkswagen bug. It was a little Volkswagen bug. So we calculated gas was so cheap back then and our bug could get like 50 miles to a gallon it would take us exactly $25 to drive to Alabama for gas. So we thought, well, that would be way cheaper than shipping, you know, like 12 to 15 spool frames. So we thought this was brilliant. The only problem was we didn't have $25. And we had to get them to the guy before the end of the week. And this was like Monday. See, there goes Monday again. But it was at the beginning of the week. And so we're talking, trying, how are we going to come up with $25? We just didn't know what we were going to do. So we went, and we didn't have the credit card at that time to do it. The pastor, this was another pastor. <laughs> this one was the other one would never come back to our house. <laughs> <laughs> and this one we knew really well. We were pretty friendly. We never had pastors. This was the only the two times we ever had pastors come to our house was the one I talked about in the last episode. And then this time he came by the house, which I was shocked. And he said he just stopped by to visit, you know, for a minute he was driving by. We didn't tell him our predicament. We just told him we'd gotten these orders and we were thinking about taking them to Alabama. And so he got ready to leave and he said, can I use your phone? And I said, sure, and took him in. And he used the phone and then he left. Well, a couple of hours later, I went in there to answer the phone and there by the phone lay $25. You know, sometimes these things that happen just blows my mind. Yeah. You would think by now I wouldn't be amazed or in awe of the things God does for me. You know, you would think I'd get used to it. And I'm glad I don't get used to it because each time it happens it's like all over again, you know, falling in love with God and, and realizing His faithfulness. So we had our $25. So we piled all those spool frames into the Volkswagen bug, if you can imagine. And they're they, not tiny. They're, they were they're 15 inches by 15 inches okay. and 8 inches wide. Yeah. And we had to pack them carefully. So, you know, they were, there was a lot of them. And we had you two kids, and then the two of us. And our luggage. Yeah, you all that in the bug? Yeah. You think your Volkswagen or your vacations are rough, Michael. <laughs> Well, it gets even better. So we got all of them packed in to there and the kids on top of them. Well, then I had to pack. It was going to be a two-day drive. We couldn't stop at a motel. We didn't have money. And we're talking the Volkswagen. So I inherited this Volkswagen later. We're talking a Volkswagen in the middle of winter where Some, there's no air no, conditioning. Or I mean, in the middle stopped. of summer, there's no air conditioning. And the heat that is in the Volkswagen comes off of the engine into a little vent by your left foot <laughs> and it like burns the hide off your left foot. And we're, we're driving from Kansas to Alabama in the dead of summer <laughs> with no air conditioning in, in this car and I had, a, I had to put a cooler in there because we couldn't stop to buy food. We had no money to buy the food. So I took what we had in the refrigerator and put it in the cooler so we'd have stuff to eat. And uh, we drove, we took turns driving, sleeping and driving, sleeping. So we were hoping and praying the guy would pay us as soon as we get there because I didn't know what we were going to do, where we were going to sleep once we arrived there, you know, because we didn't have money. And we arrived there and they were the nicest people. And he said, you're not going to stay at any hotel, you're going to come stay with us. And I thought, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, I was so excited. And so he paid us. But you know, we got that money and it was very tempting. We cashed the check because we had to cash the check while we were there to get money for gas to drive home again is what we needed. Yeah. And 
but we didn't go crazy. The inclination would have been, oh, we worked so hard, this trip was so long, let's stop at a nice hotel going home, let's stop for every meal. We didn't do that. We went and drove straight through back home. It was hard, but we saved money. We got home sooner so we could start working again. We just, we stopped, this is healthy eating here. We stopped and got packages of bologna and a loaf of bread. We did splurge, so we got us all and You've lived to tell about it. You and actually I, ate bologna and lived to tell about it. Eating Mom. so mean. <laughs> but we did splurge and got us all a Pepsi, a pop, you know. And so we had a couple of little treats to go back home on. And that's how we started our business. We didn't have, you know, people want to start their own business and they immediately go out and make this huge business plan, you make know. All these car, buy all these cars. I see people who are starting their business and they have a $50,000 car. I know. And and we succeeded. I mean, the business took off insane. For ba even for back then, we made that was the only those. There was a couple years we were actually borderline. We would have been wealthy if we weren't paying to get the house remodeled and adding more into the business. You know, we made a lot of money off those silly spool frames. So so that was our business that we talk about all the time. You know, with the player pianos and that type of thing. That's what we did then for for years. And even after Dad left, then yeah, and you know, and we would have things like drill presses in our living room if we were having to work on something, and you know, things like that. And you know, the horrible abusive parents that my parents were. <laughs> but, but you know, I remember like my brother and I, we would have things happen. So like one time, my brother and I were playing with the drill press. <laughs> And I opened the top and the belt that runs the drill press was growing around there. Well, I thought it was cool. I'd hold my finger on there. And I'd zap it you along. You guys weren't supposed to be touching it. Well, I know. That's what you said. But, <laughs> uh, and at that time, I don't think they were actually, I don't think you guys were actually using it in the living room that time. I think it was We were selling moved. it. We were trying to, we needed the money. So we were selling it exactly. and a guy come, looked at it and he yes. left and we didn't get it unplugged right away after he looked at it. It was just yeah. like, like 10 minutes. Just, yeah, just so you guys don't think, my parents just left us. No, we know. all It have. was just one of those things that happened where, you know, they didn't get it taken back downstairs yet. And so I was like, oh, ho. <laughs> And so then I had my brother, and I said, this is well, yeah, listen, she had her brother try yeah. it. So this is high-speed spinning machinery. Yeah, this yeah. is high spinning. And um, I said, oh, come here, David. <laughs> <laughs> he said, put your finger on this and feel it. Not knowing that I didn't tell him to hold his finger still to just feel the belt running underneath it. He let his finger go, and it totally ripped off. Yeah, the whole top. His, yeah, the whole top of his finger. finger and all that. And off. so they would have stuff like this happen in the middle. And back then, you didn't have medical insurance. No, you, know, you uh, paid cash for it. And so, yeah, you'd have stuff like that that you'd come up with, and then it'd be like, oh great, so now we got to pay this medical bill. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, so. even like when David was born, uh, we had medical insurance at that point. We because dad was working at player piano so we had it through them and we had to pay for it though yeah it was a little bit cheaper but we still had to pay for Your it company didn't pay for it no, you paid no. for it yeah we paid for it but we had the medical insurance and after he was born for some reason there was something in the fine print and they wouldn't pay a penny of it so we were having to pay insurance premiums and huge hot doctors bills from his Delivery and everything. How and much um, was his? Do you remember how much the bill was? I think it was like three thousand, four thousand dollars. Yeah, it was a lot back then. Yeah, when you're making three hundred dollars a month, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it was a huge amount, and so we were just paying a little bit. So we finally had to drop our insurance pay, medical insurance, because we couldn't do both of them. And, and it didn't cover, our regular medical insurance didn't cover anything. We still had to make co-pays and pay for medicines and all that. And so we just finally dropped and thought, why are we paying the insurance company? And it didn't even cover 
the insurance we had didn't even cover like major medical stuff. Yeah. Like we had to be in the hospital, so it's like, what are we keeping this for? Yeah. So we, yeah, we dealt with all those types of things. Yeah. And I feel bad because I hate saying this, but I, it, I try to be very patient when people say, yeah, but we got this or we got that, you know. I've been there, I know. But you have to just take care of it and you just do it the best you can. Yeah. And people say, well, you know, I have a whole bunch of medical bills. It's really, I have to say, all three of us are kind of losing patience with this because after 18 years of doing this, we're kind of like, all right, suck it up. But, <laughs> but, you know, they'll say, well, I have all these medical bills. I have medical, um, I have all this medical debt and I, well, I just can't pay the medical debt. Come to find out, they're out spending, uh -huh. going camping, going on vacation, buying all kinds of quilt material, buying all kinds of scrapbook material, going golfing. They have enough money for all the recreation stuff. But they don't for the medical bills. But they don't have enough stuff for medical bills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I understand medical bills are really high and you do need to talk to people to get them, you know, done. But There are situations where it's not the person's fault, but yeah. we're not talking about you right now. Yeah, we're, we're talking about people who are just being irresponsible and paying your medical is part of life. I mean, you just, you have to, we've had our shares of thousands and thousands of dollars of medical bills. We've had two, three day vacations that weren't to see family in our 20 years of marriage because um you know family vacations i guess mike and i have gone off for a night or two but not that often we don't even do that once a year and um you just you don't do those things mm -hmm. yeah. if people just think well i have medical bills so what am i supposed to do well you're supposed to pay them i'm not going to cut my standard of living so that i can pay medical bills that's exactly it. Yeah, you put it perfect, Michael. Yeah, that's what it is. People, people are wanting us now to tell them how to save money to get their wants. How do I want to say this? And not to pay for their needs. And not to pay for their needs. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to have to take the money that they're spending on their wants to pay for their needs. Does, yeah. Did that come out right? Yeah, you know what I mean? that's exactly right. It's like... I don't want to, I want you to tell me how to save a whole bunch of money on my electricity and my groceries and this so I can have more money to have my fun with. It's not a matter of can you tell me how to save money so I can I'm desperate to pay for my needs. You know what I mean? And there uh, are people, I mean I know I'm going to get the emails. There are people who are have to pay for your needs. Yeah. And we get that. You know, everyone says, "Well, how can you type that?" Well, you live on what six hundred and fifty dollars a month now? It's seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars a month disability, and that's it. And that's what you've lived on for years. And that's what you raised two teens on when we first got sick. And it can be done. You just have to decide if you're going to do it or not. And it's we're not saying it's pleasant by any means, you know. Um, but well, that's why I get a little frustrated too because people will say. Well, back then it was so much easier and things were so much cheaper. And but I'm I'm pretty much living on the same amount. There was two years back in the '70s where we made about a thousand dollars a month or a little bit more, a couple thousand dollars a month. We made good money for two years. But other than that two-year period, I have always lived off of between 260, and now I feel like I'm really rich because I'm up to 700 dollars over a. 40 plus 45 year span. I've only lived on a few yeah. hundred dollars a month and it's ebbed and gone. The things, prices have gone up, gone down, higher. I still, my money is so under control that I can live off of a few hundred dollars a month no matter what decade I'm living at. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and people say that things were cheaper then, but what they don't, what they don't want to notice is that how much less the incomes Income were. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, and just a disclaimer, just so everyone knows, as far as living on a dime goes, basically mom and I have never been paid. You know, we have made enough money so that Mike has been paid, but mom hasn't received a check, I haven't received a check, and we're, we have, mom and I have basically volunteered for this. So your income is just the disability alone yeah. from yeah. this. That's all and I mean. 
and up until just a couple of years ago, I was just doing the five hundred dollars, and it just yeah. recently. The Social Security now has kicked in because I'm older, and don't you say anything, son-in-law. So actually, I'm older and I'm making more money. Isn't that you know, crazy? You know, yeah. I'm making more money now in my life than I ever have. But now, you know, we get we get Security. people criticizing us all the time, saying, "Well, you just don't know what it's like." We do. We have been pretty much in every stage except for the filthy, stinking rich stage um, <laughs> of the gamut. You know. And we do make enough that Mike and I are comfortable now, but it's not. We're, we still aren't taking vacations. We still don't buy new cars. So if we were spending like everyone else in the neighborhood we live in, we would not be at all comfortable. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. yeah. But it's because we choose to live the way that we live. We live a similar standard to a lot of those people with a lot less money. Yeah, yeah. because we do things like dumpster dive, and we do things like we're, buy clothes at thrift stores. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we're willing to buy the you know stuff at garage sales, Christmas toys at garage sales. <gasps> I actually buy Christmas toys for my kids at garage sales, but you know it's not going to kill. Well, it's kind of like Grandma. So. One time, um, we went to our na neighbors went to the same church we did, and we didn't meet them for a while, and so um, it, it was years later after we finally met them and and we got to know them, and the gal told Grandma she said. She said, I hated to introduce myself to you because I thought you were really, really wealthy. And she said, I, you know, I just thought you were so much wealthier than us. And the thing is, Grandma and Grandpa didn't have much. Grandma would take old clothes that my aunts would give me and cut them apart and make dresses for me. But she did them so beautifully and did it so well that I, we looked like we had money when we dressed and everything. And so... Part of it is people don't realize you can look like you have a lot of money and if you just learn to do stuff and try to be careful with your money and do like the garage sale stuff. And so we've always kind of looked rich kind of type idea, you know, or like we had money. Even though we don't have very much, it's just a matter of using our wisely, the money wisely that we do have, you know. Exactly. So. All right, well, we're going to wrap up for this one and we will continue next time. Um, let's see, what do I need to say? Please subscribe, share, like, everything. <laughs> um, and of course, Mom's 500 Ways I Lived on $500. And we have all of our books right now 50% off. So the only one we don't have is Dining on a Dime. That's because we only have like 180 left of these. Um, but we are not reprinting these, but they're on clearance right now. And when they're gone, they're gone. But if you want Dig Out of Debt, if you want menus from Dining on a Dime, which these are all the menus that go with the recipes in dining, or Quick and Easy Menus, or Mom's Book, these are all 50% off right now. So go to livingonadime.com. That's our ad so that we can get paid. Right? Yep. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.